Lupus is by far the most mysterious and debilitating disease in medicine. And why is that? Because it is a complex disease. It's difficult to define, it's hard to diagnose, and it's extremely challenging to manage. The Lupus Foundation of America has as its primary mission to improve the quality of life of patients with lupus. And they're doing this by aggressively pursuing a research agenda that will help physicians and scientists unravel the mystery of lupus. The LFA is focusing on promising areas of lupus research where there is a gap in our understanding or where there has been insufficient funding. Three of these areas include research on how lupus affects the heart, the brain, and the kidneys. The lupus causes inflammation of the lining of the heart, the lungs, the coronary arteries, and other blood vessels in the body. We now know that inflammation is a major factor in heart disease in the general population. And that's why we understand why women with lupus have a 50-fold increased risk of having heart attacks compared to women without lupus. I've had pericarditis, which is inflammation of the heart and uh, I've had pleurisy, which is inflammation of the lungs. Currently, um, on 23 different medicines. So, uh, right now, my job is taking medicine. Each medicine that I take is, um, I think about it as, um, that's another day that I can go on. We now know that the inflammatory proteins that are responsible for the development and progression of lupus may also be playing a role in the premature heart disease seen in these women. And thanks to this new information, we are now better able to manage lupus and improve the quality of life for those affected by the disease. A devastating complication of lupus is its effect on the brain. And this can range from anything from severe headaches to depression, difficulty concentrating, memory loss, and even severe manifestations such as seizures, hallucinations, psychosis, and even stroke. I started having some scary symptoms like numbness in arms and legs and my face. And um, I have to say, I, I had really never seen a doctor look terrified, but having a 30-year-old start complaining of symptoms that resemble TIAs um, scared him and he said as much. Our work here at Texas Children's is concentrating on uh, more novel neuroimaging techniques that may let us get at earlier damage uh, and inflammation in the brain. When we look at research uh, MRIs, we're looking at um, various structures of the brain for signs of inflammation, uh, early damage, or poor blood flow. The more serious manifestations for me has been that the lupus has affected the uh, central nervous system, which has caused uh, a stroke and multiple TIAs. I also have it affect my peripheral nervous system, so I get a lot of um, tingling and nerve pain, and there's just nothing like nerve pain. It's, it's like fireworks going off in your body. Early diagnosis of neuropsychiatric lupus may allow a physician to more aggressively treat the disease, and may also allow a physician and the patient to get early access to uh, neuropsychology, psychology care, uh, and sometimes psychiatric care. Up to 40% of patients and two-thirds of children with lupus have their kidneys affected by the disease. This has been termed lupus nephritis. The inflammation in the kidneys can lead to scarring, and this can lead to kidney failure, requiring dialysis, and in some cases, kidney transplantation. I went to the hospital, they told me I was going to get a kidney biopsy, it was my first surgery ever. They told me that my kidneys had gotten so bad that I needed to start chemotherapy the next day. First of all, when they said chemo, I'm like, what? Chemo? Cancer? What? We didn't really understand, it really shocked the heck out of us. Then they told us the side effects, and you, you basically just want to go to the ground and just cry and punch the ground. You're just you know, you don't want these for your kid. 
Physicians treating lupus nephritis in children face many challenges, primarily because we don't have adequate information to tell us what is the best treatment. We've developed a new approach to determining the best treatment for lupus nephritis. And the new approach involves really taking advantage of all the patients who are treated for lupus nephritis because every patient has something to contribute in terms of information. If we could compare patients with different treatments, maybe we would learn something about what the best treatment is. The value of this particular study is that we will actually be able to learn what is the best treatment in children. And not only what drugs work best, but also what have the least side effects. I think the hardest part of lupus is the side effects of all the medicines and changing everything about my life. The medicine that they, they have, it is helping one thing, but it's making another thing worse. And it would just be nice if they can just have a medicine that can help that one thing without anything else being affected. The Lupus Foundation of America is advancing research in lupus on three fronts. They're leading special initiatives, they're funding lupus investigators, and they're advocating for increased public and private investment. They are tackling the tough issues that affect the daily lives of patients with lupus, and they're bringing together the stakeholders, including the doctors, the industry leaders, the government officials, and the public to work in collaboration to advance the science and medicine of lupus. Without more funding for lupus research, many opportunities will be lost and progress delayed. It is a hard fact that a lack of money often stands in the way of curing sickness and relieving suffering. But thanks to people like you who bring new money to the fight, we will now be able to rally experts and deploy resources to finally bring an end to lupus and its devastating impact.